So if you're thinking of hiking the PCT southbound, you've probably heard by now that you should try to be out of the Sierras or over Forester Pass by early October uh, in order to avoid an early season snowstorm. And while this is generally good advice, uh, you can actually get some pretty nasty weather earlier in September than you might think, which is what happened to me and some of the other southbounders in 2017. So what I want to do in this video is just describe the conditions we had in 2017 and then talk about uh, some of your options for layering and other gear so that you can hopefully go into it more prepared than I was. So first the conditions. Uh, in 2017 in the Sierras, the first snow fell on the night of September 20th. And following that we had two days of pretty consistent snow. Uh, nights as low as 16 degrees Fahrenheit, days hardly getting above freezing, and up to a foot of snow at the highest elevations at the tops of the passes. Now these were pretty rough conditions and neither I or the people I was with were really prepared for them. And so uh, once we got to Tuolumne Meadows after those two days of snow, we hitched out of the Sierras and uh, took a couple days off to wait for it to melt. While we were doing that, we uh, went to Mammoth Lakes and picked up some uh, better clothes and gear. Then we headed back to the Sierras and finished the JMT section. And during that time, we thankfully had uh, pretty good weather, although the nights still got really cold. Uh, in fact, my last night in the Sierras got down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, are these conditions normal or typical for that time of year in the Sierra? Uh, not really. Generally, you're not going to start seeing conditions like that until pretty well into October, depending on the year. Uh, but it just goes to show you that it can happen. Uh, so I think that you should have a kit that can get you through those kind of conditions uh, if you happen to be unlucky enough to get them. So let's get started. Uh, first, the sleeping bag or quilt. Um, what I would recommend for a southbound PCT through hike for the average sleeper would be a 20 degree quilt. And uh, I recommend a quilt over a mummy because it's going to be more versatile. You can open it up and use it like a blanket on the warmer nights earlier on the trail. And you can also close it up and cinch it down uh, for those cold nights in the Sierras. Now I was using this 20 degree quilt uh, pretty well below its temperature rating um, and I was doing that by supplementing it with all of the clothing that I had and I can't really say that I was comfortable but it was enough to get through the night. Now um, if you are a cold sleeper or if you just want to be more comfortable you could opt for a 15 degree or even a 10 degree quilt and that might be a little bit better but it's going to be heavier. Enlightened equipment which is the uh, one that I used uh, was pretty good, um, although for me and I think for a good number of other hikers, these don't quite live up to their temperature rating. Although um, recently Enlightened Equipment started adding more fill to all of their quilts, so that uh, might not be an issue anymore. Also, Katabatic Gear and Nun Attack Gear have great reputations for uh, conservative ratings, so you could check them out too, although they're going to be more expensive. The shelter that I used was a Z-Pax Solplex. Uh, while this was a great choice for the trail in general, um, it did not perform uh, very well in the snow. On that first night that it snowed, we got three to five inches of wet, heavy snow. And uh, this was enough to partially collapse this in the middle of the night so that I had to get out and fix my pitch. Um, and also by the morning, it had sagged badly enough that it had just soaked my quilt with condensation. So that was a pretty bad situation, but um, would I avoid this shelter or recommend carrying something more bomb proof for the PCT uh, for a southbound through hike? No, I would not because uh, the weather on the PCT is generally so good and so mild that you can usually get away with just about any shelter. What I would recommend instead is making sure that you choose your campsites very wisely in the Sierras, and this is going to mean getting below tree line whenever possible, and also pitching your shelter with tree cover immediately above you, and this is going to trap heat above you and keep you warmer, and also prevent snow from building up 
on your shelter. The pad that I used and can definitely recommend is the NeoAir X-Lite women's version. I chose the women's version because it has an R value of 3.9 instead of 3.2. And if you are under 5'8", you can use it as a full-length pad. And it is uh, still pretty light, uh, light enough that you could use it for the whole trail. What I also did uh, just in the Sierras was supplement it with an eighth inch foam pad. And uh, this added a little bit of warmth, but it was mostly to prevent punctures because a sleeping pad failure in those conditions would have been very bad. Uh, one more quick note on pads. If you plan on using a torso length or three quarter length pad for the rest of the trail, which is totally viable, you might want to send yourself um, some cut down Z light or pick up a Z light pad and cut it down in South Lake Tahoe just to put under your legs um, for the Sierras because I think that's going to make a big difference for your uh, sleeping warmth and comfort in the Sierras. Uh, now, moving on to clothing, we'll start with upper body layering. Um, for your base layer, you're going to want to have a mid weight base layer. And uh, nice features to have are going to be a zip neck and also thumb loops. Pretty much you just want to avoid having a really thin shirt or uh, one of those like button down collared shirts that are really common on the PCT because uh, this is going to be a lot warmer and more comfortable. Next you're going to want to have a mid layer or active layer. The one that I used in 2017 and that I still use sometimes and can definitely recommend is uh, the Patagonia R1. It's just a hundred weight fleece, but um, this one has some really nice features like an integrated balaclava, which zips up to over your mouth. And uh, this one has thumb loops as well, which are a nice feature. Now, while I really like this, um, it is definitely expensive. So if you want to save money, um, you could go with just a simple generic hundred weight fleece like this one that I got on Amazon for like eight dollars. The only problem is it's uh, not going to have a hood so you would need to supplement it with a beanie and neck gaiter or a balaclava because uh, keeping your head warm and your uh, face and neck is really important in those uh, cold conditions. Now the rain jacket that I use on the PCT and that I can recommend is the Frog Togs Ultralight Jacket. Um, this is my rain jacket of choice on the PCT because it is uh, so light and so cheap and also the weather is, like I said, so good on the PCT. The only problem with this is that um, it is not good in the cold because the fit is so baggy and it doesn't trap heat efficiently. So rather than get a more expensive or better featured rain jacket for the PCT, which is not really necessary, what I do now instead is uh, supplement it with a wind shirt. Uh, this one is the Montbell Tachyon Anorak. And what I like about this is that it is nice and close fitting, so it traps heat much better than the Frog Togs. And at less than two ounces, it's not very much of a weight penalty. And at a combined weight of a little over seven ounces for both of these, um, that's still lighter than a lot of rain jackets, it's more versatile, and uh, it's probably going to be cheaper too. Now moving on to uh, lower body stuff. Uh, first I'm just going to have my underwear and running shorts that I would use for the rest of the trail, and I have nothing to say about that. Then I'm going to have some mid-weight tights. Um, it doesn't really matter which ones, um, just polyester or wool, and in the uh, maybe four to six ounce range. Just mid-weight tights, and these are going to be great for uh, sandwiching between your bare skin and your shell pants in bad weather. And also they're nice for sleeping in, and um, they're nice for wearing on their own during the day when it's cool or cold. Over top, I would layer rain pants, and the rain pants that I really like are the Montbell Versalite pants, because at just over 3 ounces, they're not even that much heavier than wind pants, and they're going to be uh, more protective in those kind of bad conditions I was talking about. Uh, now moving on to the gloves. What I had in 2017 in that snowstorm uh, was just one pair of thin liner gloves, and that did not work out very well, and I was like desperately putting Ziploc bags on my hands. Um, so what I would recommend instead is having some fleece mittens 
and then rain mittens to go over top of them. Mittens because they're warmer than gloves. Um, these rain mitts are the uh, Bora Gear ones and they don't come seam sealed so I did that myself uh, to make them more waterproof. And um, since I would probably already be carrying a pair of thin liner, go liner gloves, I would hang on to them and then have a nice uh, three glove system. For socks, um, in 2017, during that snowstorm, I only had two pairs of thin liner socks. And uh, needless to say, my feet were really uncomfortable when um, crossing freezing cold streams and uh, when walking through snow. So I would not recommend having just two pairs of thin socks. Um, when we went into Mammoth, like I said, uh, when we got some better gear, I picked up two more pairs of socks. Uh, I got one mid-weight pair of socks um, for hiking in snow or cold weather. And I also got just a pair of generic fuzzy socks um, that I would keep dry at the bottom of my pack in my pack liner and only use them for sleeping in. And this is a nice three sock system that I will still use for those kind of bad conditions. Now let's talk about insulated jackets. Uh, generally you're going to want to choose something that is not too much overkill for the rest of the trail but will still be just warm enough in the Sierras. And you can go down or synthetic. I personally like synthetic jackets and if you want a synthetic jacket um, you should get one that has Climashield Apex as the insulation, such as uh, this one, which is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Jacket. Um, this would be a good choice if you're the kind of hiker who, uh, when you get to camp, you're just going to hop right into your sleeping bag. But if you know you run cold, or if you want to sit out at night cooking or cold soaking, this uh, might not be warm enough. And for those people, I would take a look at the Nunatak PCT jacket, which is similar to this, but offered in uh, several warmer fill options. One very important feature you're going to want to have is a hood, um, because if you're using a quilt, the hood is going to be um, your primary head warmth at night. And another very important feature that you're going to want to have on the hood is draw cords. And this is going to be important for just cinching down that hood and trapping in more heat around your head, which uh, more heat on your head is always a good thing. Uh, last but definitely not least is going to be a simple fire starting kit. On one of those nights we were getting snowed on, uh, like I said I was with some other hikers and uh, one of them thankfully had some stuff to get a fire going and that fire was pretty critical for drying out our sleeping bags and our clothing and I was stupid enough to not be carrying anything to start a fire with, even a lighter. Um, so now in those kind of conditions I always make sure that I have uh, something to start a fire with. And for me it's, it's going to be pretty simple and light, it's just going to be either a lighter or matches. And then for some kindling, cotton balls and Vaseline in a Ziploc bag. And just a quick note on having fires in the Sierras, which are a very wildfire prone area. I would only have one if it is an emergency, and please make sure that when you leave your camp, you check very carefully to make sure that the fire is out. Uh, so that's everything. Uh, what I'll do now is uh, make a gear list for all this stuff, sort of my final recommendations, and put it down in the description so you can take a look at it. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. Uh, thanks for watching.